And that was the end of the briefing. As the people left the room, several came up to me before leaving to thank me for coming and making an interesting and thought-provoking presentation. My wife's cousin invited me to his office for some coffee, and until I arrived, I had no idea how far up the chain of command he was. He's a member of the Supreme, Soviet Supreme High Command. We talked for about an hour concerning several aspects of the briefing when he handed me an unmarked file. I sat in total disbelief of what I saw. In my hands was a letter from the Department of Homeland Security, Secretary Janet Napolitano, officially requesting that the Russian Federation contribute four brigades of advanced security forces as part of a larger multinational force to insist in quelling domestic violence within the United States of America. The letter was dated September 14, 2009, and signed by uh, the Department of Homeland Security Secretary Napolitano. So I want to say something. All of you people out there who have mocked the warnings, who have absolutely ridiculed, scoffed, scorned, and so well, I don't see any of these guys. According to my general friends, uh, there were 420,000 foreign troops bivouacked in the, the former military bases that George Bush Sr. gave away to NATO. So, Doug, this is four, and I don't know, maybe somebody could send you or send me, uh, what's the strength of uh, a brigade, a Russian brigade, but we're talking thousands and thousands and thousands. So Lavrov basically said, uh, the foreign minister basically said, how bad are our uh, casualty is going to be. Now, putting that into perspective, Doug, two years ago, that was a real situation, so much so that Robert Jones got in more trouble, and thank God, I prayed for him and others prayed for him, they'd be kept alive. We have to get it across to people. This is absolutely happening now. It is the greatest betrayal. We are no longer a political entity functioning at the two-party system under a constitutional bill of rights. We are under a neo-fascist regime funded by the globalists for the total decimation and pillage plunder of the United States of America. And I don't know how any more I can be bottom line than that. Well, Steve, no, you're, you're exactly right. Now, let's get back to this report from Moscow here for a moment. Uh, a, a couple of things. First of all, why, I, I get the question quite frequently. Look, I, I've got no doubt that foreign troops are on American soil. We've, we have enough anecdotal evidence. We have enough direct evidence uh, given to us, yeah. you know, that, that they are indeed on our, our soil. And, and some is to make, some are here to, to you know, uh, to appear legitimate, like cross-training and what, what have you. But uh, quite quite a, quite a few of these are here for nefarious purposes. But the one question I get a lot is, if all of these foreign troops are here on our soil, number one, why aren't we seeing them visually? Why aren't more people seeing them visually? And number two, wouldn't it take a lot of support forces to to uh, to keep these these uh, these foreign troops, uh, you know, fed uh, and and you know? Absolutely. Like... Now, now let me tell you a story that I got from an active duty Air Force guy just in the last 48 hours. He said, "Do you remember, Steve, when I told you about the C-130s uh, that people were seeing all over the United States? Their single mission and their practice, Doug, was pre-selecting drop zones." to resupply the international troops that are going to go after the American citizens and their guns. And this is from a man who was a trainer for them. Do you follow me? Uh, I now, certainly do. where are they all kept? Again, let me explain something. George Bush Sr. gave over 100 Cold War military bases to NATO and to the what I would call the excursionary forces. Look, we've got Holloman Air Force Base. We've got a whole German... Uh, uh, regiment. I mean, they own the whole base in, uh, I think it's New Mexico. And then you've got the situation of uh, up in Saskatchewan in the Royal Canadian Artillery Base. You've got a full German tank division, and uh, that's just the Germans. You go to Boise, Idaho, uh, and yeah. you've got the Royal, what is it, Singapore military, the Jets. And, and I want to share something. They're all over. And I asked two four-star generals, active duty, I said, and this was two years ago, I said, guys, how many troops are here under color of international treaty and agreement? And they at that time said 420,000. Now, wow. look, I don't know anything about the military, and I, I, I openly confess that, but I know that I've learned that when you're talking to four-stars, you basically only have one step above that, and most people can't handle that. And you don't have to go to any higher pay grade. You know, I, I get so tired. And by the way, when I heard uh, the President of the United States say, well, that's above my pay grade, for the record, there are people above his pay grade. And, yeah. and just so you know, the handlers are there. So, Doug, 
The answer is they're bivouacked, they're strategically placed in the open at military bases, on cross-training, but look, people are running into them all over the country, and we've been reporting on that, and we've been reporting on that ad nauseum, and now it's implemented, you know, and, and, and when I'm saying implemented, they're strategically placed, we've heard of nothing but more and more weapons, and look, you've got to know, if people can't put two and two together, then they're going to be in big trouble before they even wake up, if they ever do. Because you're talking about one billion rounds of ammo just between two federal agencies. That's not counting the military. That's not counting every other uh, federal agency. Every federal agency is armed.